So let's talk about the receiving and giving halves of the circle. This is, people can spend their entire lives pondering this topic and the nature of them and how they work. And, and while it's true that there are big philosophical and spiritual and personal implications of this whole question, what's true is that in the three-minute game and in the ex exploration of the quadrants, what we're doing is distilling it down to its simplest, most fundamental elements. And that lets us experience it in a way that is very tangible. It's physical. So it takes it out of the realm of theory. And um, it also makes it more challenging in some ways because it's right here. Um, so there are bigger implications to receiving and giving and lots of different ways to think about the words and define them and what they all mean. And, um, and what I'm going to be talking about here is what is the experience of them in this practice and in this process. And it's really is, it's a radical inquiry into the nature of them. And, and Pretty much everything I know about receiving and giving has come from my experience in these quadrants that has clarified it for me and uh, also has made me look at it in a very sort of exact way. So all that to say that when we're talking about receiving and giving here, we're talking about the distilled essence of it that you find in the quadrants. So the giving half and the receiving half are not about who's doing and who's being done to. Um, way back in the beginning, we talked about the, the way that people often use the word give uh, as synonymous with doing. And people often use the word receive to mean the synonymous is being done to. And that what this, is, this whole process is going to do for you is break that well, and that can be hard to do, partly because we think that when you're doing, you're supposed to be giving, uh, and also there's a fear of selfishness that, that comes in there as well. So what the wheel does is shows you that there's a difference between who's doing and who's giving, and that difference makes all the difference. So in the giving half of the circle, either of these quadrants, you set aside what you want or you prefer, but you keep your responsibility to have a limit. So what you're, whether you're doing or not doesn't matter. It's who it's for that matters. And in the giving half the circle, it's for them. So you're either giving them your action or you're giving them access to you. And you can tell it's for them because you ask them what they want. In the, uh, from giving, you ask them, how would you like me to touch you? And from here, you ask, how would you like to touch me? So you are asking them what they want, and that shows you that it's for them. It's not for you. So on the receiving side, you are, of course, respecting the limits of what your giver is willing to give, but your desires come first. And you can tell that because you are asking for what you want. You're saying, would you scratch my back? Would you rub my feet or whatever it is? Or you're saying, may I feel you up? May I play with your hair? May I uh, play with your hands? So again, who's doing doesn't matter. What matters is who it's for, and in the receiving half, it's for you. So in the what you're receiving in the receiving half is when you're in the taking quadrant, you're receiving the gift of access. In the receiving quadrant, you're receiving the gift of their action. So what actually is the gift? There's more to it than that. The gift really is time and attention. And when you are giving, you are giving your time, you are giving your attention, and you are setting aside what you would prefer. And it's the setting aside that's the real gift here. Um, and you're receiving 
of course you're receiving their time, you're receiving their attention, and you're receiving an opportunity to put your desire first. And of course you don't get to do that in all, all the time, in all of your life. I'm not even sure you really want to. Um, but in the receiving half of the circle, you do get to put your desires first. And that's why it's so wonderful and also why it's so challenging. So another way to say this, which is probably the shortest way, is that the doing and done to halves are about what's happening. And the re giving and receiving halves are about who it's for. And that distinction is what makes all the difference in the world. So one way to look at receiving and giving in that dynamic is that uh, if you think of it as an irrigation pipe. I grew up in southern New Mexico. We irrigated the alfalfa and the cotton. So there's an irrigation pipe. There's a valve at the top end. There's also a valve at the bottom end. And of course, both valves have to be open for the water to flow. So in this context, that means that we're, we're talking about receiving and giving between two people, or two or more people. I'm not talking about receiving in the larger sort of spiritual or philosophical sense from God or the universe. We're talking about between two or more people. And both of those people are there because they want to be there. So the receiver, it's about what the receiver wants, and it's about what the giver is willing to give and not the other way around. It's not about what the giver wants to give and the receiver is willing to go along with. That's not really it. That's attempting to push the water back up the pipe. So it's about what the receiver wants, the giver is willing to give, and it's created by an agreement between the two of you. It's not created by your intention. You may be intending to give, but if it's not what the receiver wants, it is not giving. It's you pushing something along. So, two or more people, both of you are there by choice. What the receiver wants, what the giver is willing to give, and it's created by the agreement. And when you do that, that creates this wonderful flow that goes one direction at a time from the giver to the receiver. And the more clear you are about who it's for, the greater the flow, so that the larger the gift that can be delivered. It's also true that the flow that's created feels good on either end, so it can feel great to give and it feels great to receive, so the fact that it feels good to you is not an indicator of whether you're giving or receiving what an indicator of whether you're giving or receiving is what is your agreement. What often happens is that people resist the idea of taking, receiving, and giving apart. Because of course you do have to take them apart in order to experience each of them. It's true that you wouldn't want to go through your entire life, at least I wouldn't, in this sort of strict giving and receiving roles that we're creating here. Um, but the experience of taking them apart allows you to know what they are and clarify what they are. And then when you go back in your life and you can kind of hang out and play around the middle, that's great. But until you can take them apart, you cannot claim to know what they are or how they feel. So this is a practice about taking them apart. At any rate, people often resist that idea. One is that it doesn't sound romantic or it doesn't sound very spiritual um, or they have this myth that, well, by giving, that's how I receive. The main reason, however, is because receiving is inherently vulnerable. When you are in the receiving end of the flow, it is a vulnerable place to be, no doubt about it. If you think of someone leaves you a present and puts it on your porch, in order to take that present in, to receive that present, you have to open your front door. 
that means that now the cold wind can blow in and you know now you're you're vulnerable to danger the door is open but the fact is that you cannot take that present in without opening the door it's just inherently vulnerable um, so what I've noticed about people who resist taking them apart is that once they finally do learn to do that, it's a very tender and vulnerable place to receive. So this practice is about obviously about taking those two apart and finding out who you are and what happens for you in each of those. What's also true about receiving and giving is that each of them is a human need that we all have. There are times when we need to be uh, in the center of someone else's loving care and attention and time and support and um, uh, that we need that time sometimes. And there are other times when we need to contribute to someone else's um, well-being and enjoyment. And a life without either of those would be a pretty sad life. So we need some time in the giving, we need some time in receiving. No question about it. So receiving and giving are each an inherent human need, and neither of them can substitute for the other. You cannot meet your need to receive by giving, and you cannot meet your need to give by receiving. You have to take them apart. And they're lots of fun when you take them apart as well. <laughs>